Home labbing is a fun and rewarding hobby. But between browsing the subreddit and watching other channels, it's easy to get lost in the hardware and the research and not focus on the important part, the labbing and the learning. Here are some of the easy pitfalls and gotchas when it comes to creating and maintaining your first home lab. Pitfall number one, hardware envy. I've been guilty of this one myself. You have your lab set up and running and your favorite YouTube channel puts a video showing off their new build or AliExpress server find. Maybe they found a new mini PC that crams more networking into a small chassis. Maybe it's an epic build with tons of cores. Suddenly your lab doesn't feel up to par and you want to start over with whatever this new piece of hardware is. Looking at other builds and getting hardware envy is a slippery slope into overspending and generally being unhappy. Anytime you get sucked into one of these hardware spirals, first take a breath and look at what your hardware currently is and ask, is it meeting my needs? What isn't working and what is your plan to fix what isn't working? And can you do it with what you have on hand? If you need to expand your lab and need new hardware to meet your goals and needs, then don't let me tell you not to buy hardware. I'm always hunting for new things to rack up. But take the time to really scope out if it's a need versus a want. And understand that before jumping into this decision. A few years back, I was really infatuated with a server that Craft Computing found on eBay. The price was right and the horsepower really was there. But when I bought three of these, they were dramatically overkill in the CPU department for my actual needs and didn't have the PCIe expandability that I needed down the road. And they were so loud, they were pretty much unusable for me at the time. It was that fear of missing out and the fear that my setup wasn't powerful enough. Don't fall for this one. Make sure that your need to expand is just that, a need. And take some time before making the decision to expand. There's always going to be more hardware. Pitfall number two, not getting started. In recent years, a few friends have come to me to ask for advice at getting into IT or into home labbing. And it feels like after providing them with some resources such as PDF books, online guides, example labs, and some guided steps on where they should start, there's always some excuse that follows. I just need to do or get XYZ thing to get started. Sometimes it's they need to buy a server. Sometimes they want to buy a new PC and do some planned upgrade. Sometimes it's that they need to have more free time. The truth is that starting now, as in right now, is far more valuable than starting later. Home labbing and learning in general is cumulative. What you learn today will be the foundation of what you learn tomorrow. The longer you prolong this process or procrastinate, the longer it will take you to achieve your goals some tips to avoid this. You don't need a picture perfect home lab of matching server hardware to get started. Here are some options to get started today. Option one, Windows subsystem for Linux. If you have Windows 10 or Windows 11, you can install the Windows subsystem for Linux and use this to start playing with Linux. Learn to host a simple web server or some Docker containers, or just get more familiar with the Linux operating system. The subsystem for Linux has pretty minimal impact when it's running and is easy to uninstall when you're done. You can run this directly on your main PC without needing any additional hardware as long as you're running on Windows. Link in the description for steps on getting the Windows subsystem for Linux installed. Option number two is the cloud. There are tons of free tier or 30 day, 90 day, $150 credit trials for all of the major cloud platforms out there. From Oracle Cloud, which has their always free tier VM, to the Microsoft Azure free trial credits through Visual Studio, even Linode offers free and discounted credits through some of your favorite content creators. Option three, laptops. An older unused laptop makes a great starter server or VM host. The built-in battery can act like a UPS, and the screen giving you a terminal doesn't hurt either. While these may not be the most powerful or efficient hosts, when we're just getting started, those are hardly the most important factors. Option four, cheap and recycled hardware. While there is a whole host of cheap options for hardware online, it's also worth checking local thrift stores, pawn shops, and marketplaces for discount systems. 
the number of businesses that sell their old PCs on marketplaces or Craigslist or dump them at secondhand stores is dependent on the area you live in, but can be a great way to get your hands on some super affordable hardware to get started. Pitfall number three, not setting goals. Something I pointed out in my What is a Home Lab video is that developing goals can help you set up your lab for success. If you didn't see that video, make sure to go back and check that one out. There's some interesting things that play into what we talked about today. Say you've bought a server or a mini PC, or maybe you set up that free Linux VM in Oracle. What now? If your goal is career development, Take a deeper look into what software stacks are specific to the field you're investigating. Here are some places to get started for their respective fields, though these are by no means the only places to start. If you're looking at system administration, a Windows domain controller, creating some users, standing up a client machine on the domain, and maybe even configuring some domain uh, group policies is a great place to get started. Uh, if you wanna focus more on the Linux side of things, Fire up a Linux VM, install Docker, configure some containers. If DevOps is more your thing, check out using Terraform to deploy a VM. Whether that's locally in Proxmox or in the cloud, Terraform has lots of resource providers that you can leverage to test deploying VMs with automations. Uh, if you already have your VM up and running, use Ansible to make configuration changes, such as creating user accounts, setting IP addresses, or installing updates and packages. If you just want to be more familiar with cloud infrastructure, signing up for a free trial to Google Cloud or Azure or leveraging that free Oracle VM and test deploy some resources. Build a VM, learn how to make backups, learn how the firewall and network solutions on those platforms work. If you have other ideas on where beginners can get started in specifically in what field, leave it in the comments below. I'd love to hear where you guys think is a great place to get started and in what specific subfields of IT. Pitfall number four, mixing lab and production environments. It's easy to want to dive into replacing your home network with the equipment from your lab, such as that enterprise switch or firewall. If it's just you on your network, this may be fine. But if you're in a household, breaking your DHCP on a Friday evening may be a good way to get yelled at from across the house on when Netflix isn't working. There may be scenarios where this is unavoidable. For example, it's pretty hard to learn firewalls if you're not using them. However, when making the decision to put a device or software stack that you're still learning into the production environment of your home network, you take the risk of breaking your live network. Where possible, it makes sense to try and separate these environments as much as possible, or at least have a backup plan in case that you break something. For example, if you're going to unplug your ISP supplied router to use an OpenSense router, maybe it makes sense to hold on to that ISP supplied router or have a run of the mill consumer router from the store on standby until you're comfortable with the setup. For example, in my earliest builds, I would create a separate VLAN for my servers and let the Windows domain controller handle DHCP and DNS, but only for that VLAN. By having my home separate from that environment, Breaking those servers or needing to shut down my host wouldn't bring down the whole network. My biggest tip here is to remember what devices are critical to maintaining basic functionality of your home and your network, and do what you can to maintain that uptime by scheduling your maintenance or changes for when you have time to deal with the complications of messing up and when it will impact others on your network the least. I can't tell you the number of times my bacon has been saved by having a spare Raspberry Pi running Pi Hole to keep DHCP and DNS online when I mess something up major. Pitfall number five, not having backups. It's easy to think of everything you're working on in a lab as ephemeral or unimportant, as you're just practicing. But the number of times that I was setting something up in Proxmox or making a quick configuration change on something that ended up breaking my environment and wishing that I had a snapshot or a backup is innumerable. Early on, make a habit of learning how backups, restoration, and disaster recovery works for the platforms that you're working with. Whether that's Proxmox, Azure, Google Cloud, Hyper-V, or even the application themselves, knowing how to backup the data and how you can restore it. Then, 
make frequent backups and snapshots, especially while you're working on changes in those environments. It's something that will pay for itself and be of endless usefulness. Backups don't need to be complicated early on. To this day, I keep a simple Samba share online that has a USB external hard drive connected to a Pi as a source of backups. Eventually, you should try to get to the 321 backup plan, but any backups is better than none, and this cannot be overstated. This habit of backups will also be helpful if you decide to start self-hosting services that you treat less like a lab and for your personal files and data. Mind you, you can adjust the schedule and retention of your backups to fit your needs based on the importance and change frequency of your lab. If you guys have any tips and tricks that you'd like to share on how to avoid kind of the easy mistakes when building your first home lab, share them down in the comments. I'd love to see your guys' input on this. Make sure to like and subscribe if you want to see the content that I have coming up. Hopefully soon I'll be releasing my first attempt at deploying Kubernetes on a Pi cluster. Until next time, thanks for watching.